Tribute Copyright 2012 by Doug Turnbull After the long climb out of Nicholson Crater, the Mars rover finally completed the last switchback and broke over the crest of the pass, its curved front window looking out over the vast plain below. The midday sky was salmon, and from their lofty perch the rover's occupants could see for 50 kilometers. Two men sat in the front. A man and a woman sat behind them on opposing bench seats. The woman held a shiny metal tube in her gloved hands. All four wore pressure suits, but their helmets were hanging on hooks above their seats. The weather is perfect, the first man said from the front, speaking to the woman. I have a couple of candidates in sight, the driver noted. I'll have us down there in a jiffy. The rover quickly navigated the road from the rim to the plane. You guys better grab your hats, the driver said after a while. There's a perfect opportunity a couple of clicks west of us. While the two in the rear donned their helmets and checked each other's suits, the driver steered the rover, now on the relatively flat plane below the crater's rim, in pursuit of his prey. The woman entered the tiny airlock at the rear of the rover. Okay, the driver said over their suit frequency. I parked just ahead of it. The timing should be perfect for you. The woman stepped out of the airlock, off the platform, and onto the firm Martian surface. I'll be out in cycling time, the man said. Within five minutes he joined her, and they walked to the front of the rover. The two men inside could see them both through the plexiglass as the man stopped and she continued forward. The dust devil approaching them was over ten meters across at its vortex and towered out of sight above them. Filled with Mars dust, it was as large as a Kansas tornado, but spun soundlessly. She walked into it, unscrewed the lid of the tube, scattered the contents into the whirlwind, and then sank to her knees. The three men could only see her as a faint shape in the swirling dust. Que descens en paz, the man outside said quietly. The cyclone moved on and left her still kneeling on the ground. After a bit, she rose, walked to the man waiting beside the rover, and the two climbed inside the vehicle. When they were all settled, the driver headed the rover back toward the road leading up to the pass through the rim of the crater. The man and woman sat next to each other, his arm around her. Everyone was silent for a while. After a bit, he spoke to her. He would have liked that. I owed it to him, she said softly. I wouldn't be here except for him. None of us would, the first man interjected. He was the one who made it possible for the rest of us to be here, but he didn't get to come himself. We all owed it to him, the driver said finally. He's with us now. 